the second longest win streak in franchise history, 16 in a row. 17-game win streak, by the way, was back in 06-07. Oh, but they ain't played nobody. That's the narrative. Oh, you know, but they ain't beat nobody. I'm like, they, beat they won 16 in a row, man. Well, I want to, yeah, I want to get to a couple things, and I oh, do want to get to the Nets, who didn't play well tonight on their home floor, well rested in a minute. But first, all credit to the Suns who wrap up this. Road trip 4-0 and have now won 16 straight pull within a half game of the Warriors for the best record in the Western Conference. How impressed are you? Extremely impressed. And you said at halftime, Chris Paul is going to make sure this team is not going to lose. And in that third quarter, he went and picked his matchup that he liked, which happened to be LaMarcus Aldridge. And we talked, LaMarcus is no slouch. He said, come on over here, big man. Went to his spot and took over the game. When the Nets went on a run, Chris Paul made a play or Devin Booker made a play. And that's the thing. You know the Nets are a really good team. Obviously, that's, that doesn't even need to be said. But they battled all their runs on a back-to-back. So to me, JaVale McGee made plays. They ran uh, out of bounds for DeAndre Ayton twice for two point-blank hook shots. When you can throw it to your big man on and out of bounds, one was on Bembry and one was on Kevin Durant, when you can get scores like that, when you, everyone else is kind of eating them a little bit, that makes you dangerous. I'm extremely impressed. It's a big win. And, yes, people are going to say, well, you know, James Harden didn't have a good game. Well, James Harden didn't have a good game because he had five different people guarding him. I, I mean, I think it's – Equally impressive when you factor in they played last night. (laughs) You know, they're they're on this long win streak. And for for people that try to poo-poo it, I mean, this is the NBA. Who's poo-pooing? A lot of people. A lot (laughs) of people. I'm not going to call out names. Name a poo-pooer. They're in in the media. (laughs) Those poo-pooers know who they are. I want to know the names of the poo-pooers. In all seriousness, like like this team, and listen, Golden State, it's a great story. And they are really good as well. But this is the most complete team in the NBA. I mean, they don't turn it over. Yeah. They got they shoot a high percentage every night. Chris Paul and Devin Booker are as good as any backcourt you're going to see. And then from a defensive standpoint, they make it tough. They force 20 turnovers in this game tonight. Now, granted, give Brooklyn credit. They were much better in the second half. They only had the five turnovers. But, you know, when you dig a hole against a team like Phoenix, you know, they're not a bunch of young whippersnappers who are going to be uh, afraid of the moment. They're go- they know you're going to make a run. They're right. fine with right. that. But they also know that they can make the plays that are necessary. And, and the thing that makes them special for me, besides obviously Chris and, and, and Devin, is their supporting cast. Those guys are stars in their roles. Like they, 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 they ask them to do the things they're really good at. Like they don't have a scenario where they're asking guys to do things they aren't good at. Right. And that's one reason why their chemistry is so good. They, they're a dynamic team, and they are on a mission. Like they're playing like a team that felt like they gave a championship away last year. You know, that, that's the approach they have. I mean, they start off 0-3, mm-hmm. and, man, they just they just <laughs> have not let up at all. And, yeah, not all games are going to be blowouts, but they just consistently find ways to win basketball games. And, man, Phoenix is – they are really good. Heads down, going to work. Mm-hmm. And you saw it tonight. Uh, anybody ever tells you that you only have to tune in to the last two minutes of an NBA game, this game was won – in the first quarter by the Phoenix Suns because they were ready to play and the Nets obviously were not. And that speaks to the leadership of Chris Paul and Devin Booker and the professionalism collectively on the second night of a back-to-back. Yeah, and then you factor in, too, like we know how important it is how you start a game and you start the second half. And that's what they did really well in the third quarter. Mm -hmm. They put up another 34-piece in the third quarter, which when you play a team as good as Phoenix, it can somewhat demoralize you because you know your margin of error is already small. Like, again, they're not going to come out and have – you're not going to force 15 turnovers against them with Chris Paul and Devin Booker having the ball in their hands. And then they're going to make it hard for you to score. And then right now, when you look at Brooklyn, they they just – if James Harden – and I've said this – if James Harden and Durant don't play at a really high level – against good teams, they're going to struggle. And, and tonight, James just didn't shoot it well. I mean, he had a triple-double, but with this team, they need his offense. And they got good performances from Bembry. LaMarcus Aldridge continues to play at an incredibly high level, but they just don't have the depth when you start looking at their bench to be able to sustain it unless those two guys are playing at a level that, that is basically all NBA. You know, it feels differently if he had shot the ball better. It felt like Harden coasted during this game, and it felt like the Nets collectively just – 
weren't ready to play, evidenced by all those turnovers in the first half. Yeah, but, I, you know, I'll say that. And James Harden has the ball in his hands a lot, right? He does. So he's going to have high – I play with high turnover guys. You don't even – as a teammate, you don't really think about it like that. The turnovers that I do look at are deflections where he thought somebody was open and they cut because somebody was already there. So those are forced turnovers in a sense of how fast the game was moving. Also, if you notice the beginning of the game, Mikhail Bridges was picking him up full court. Right? On a back-to-back. He was p- picking him up full court. Then they were switching. Then he had a little bit of Jay Crowder. Then Devin Booker. Then Chris Paul. So he's not getting a rhythm. You know, he's not getting his, his wheels turning. And for me, I felt like they were locked into a game plan. And they were going to take advantage of getting out in transition and, one, <laughs> and, and get easy. <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, listen. We didn't have ten, he fine, didn't have but. ten turnovers. He only had seven. So. I mean, seven was still a lot. And <laughs> he didn't have one of, one of those triple doubles. No, he, he almost he had a quadruple double. Yes, he nearly had the quadruple. But but also to to Chaddy's point, like when people look at, oh, he had five, six, not tonight seven. Like when you're at that high of a usage player, sure, there's no way at this level you're gonna turn the ball over. Oh, Comes with times. the territory. Right? For you sure. are like I don't. His turnovers didn't hurt him as much tonight as his inability to make shots, and that goes back to what Channing just talked about. Think about it. They got four All NBA defenders on the starting five, <laughs> in essence. Yeah. I mean, you, you got, you know, Jay Crowder's an all-NBA defender in essence. DeAndre Aiden is. And, and, we're, and Devin Booker's much improved. But yeah. Chris Paul absolutely is. And Mikael Bridges, Bridges might. Is elite. I think he's got to get more talk for Defensive Player of the Year. But because that, the way the game has changed now, it's not about just blocking shots at the rim or getting steals. Yeah. It's have defensive, uh, um, d- defensive versatility. You can run different things with John Dre Aiden and be perfectly fine. People aren't going, well, he's going to get beat. I also like that Devin Booker took the challenge. Mm-hmm. KD started to get hot. He was like, no, I got him for a couple, you know, couple of possessions. He was kind of feeling Jay Crowder out. He said, no, let me get him. Mikhail Bridges stayed on who, who his assignment was, was getting steals, was getting deflections, and they were getting out and getting easy baskets. That chops your momentum down. It's so hard to get down, you know, to, to come back from 20 when you're like, okay, here we're at 16, turnover, back to 19. It's just like it's demoralizing. And I felt the Suns just took advantage of their opportunities. Suns were plus nine on those points off of turnovers. Let me show you a, a graphic of some of the Nets' losses against the best teams in the league. It is late November. At this point, the Nets are unbeaten against sub-500 teams and now 7-6 and six against teams over 500, including these results against some of the best teams in the league, including the defending champs on opening night. It, I know it, it's early in the season. Is this a concern? Does it is mean, a concern. What does it mean it means It means a lot because of their circumstance. Had they lost these games at full strength, I wouldn't be as concerned because I would say, you know what, they're going to get better. They're still figuring it out. I, I would, and I'd be comfortable with that. But a lot of this is because they're really shorthanded. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to replace an all NBA player in this league. Yeah. You know, to have Kyrie Irving, a guy that can get 25 a night, think about how much easier the game is for James Harden. Because now James Harden doesn't have the ball in his hands as much. Your defense isn't as loaded as much because most of those guys are on the floor with Durant and obviously also with with Harden. They're just guys that can catch and shoot. They're not guys that can actually go make plays against really good defense. And so that's a concern. And unless that gets addressed, I I just don't see a scenario where this roster as presently constructed can actually win the championship. And, and, And that doesn't take away from the greatness of Harden and also Durant, but look at the teams they're going to play against. You know, I mean, some of them on that list. You know, Milwaukee's got three of those guys. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and that supporting cast is better right now. Now, in fairness to Brooklyn, also, no Joe Harris. No Joe Harris, right. Blake Griffin. Yep. You know, so those are guys that make a difference on their roster. But ultimately, when you get in the postseason and it gets the game slows down and it's tough and teams are prepared to take stuff away, what separates the good teams from the great are the great players because they can consistently make plays against great defense and that's the problem right now when you only have a two of those guys on that roster it's going to be a challenge what do you make of the fact that the nets don't have a real impressive signature win at this point in the year i think it's just a, a, a consistency of physicality to me right because when things got tough kd goes i'm going into kd mode I'm going to score the win, right? And you saw it there. He was just like, I could get to my spot, and I'm just going to shoot, shoot, shoot. And then everyone else was getting rebounds. They, like, stopped moving. So I think they just have to figure themselves out. The Bulls know who they are. 
They're playing with a true point guard. The Suns obviously know they are. Milwaukee, listen, you got that monster coming at you straight forward. So you got to have a right kind of attitude. But again, it's the physicality. If you look at all those teams, most of them have a really big, big man. Not nothing against the Marcus Aldridge, but it's hard for him to do all that work down there, get extra shots, get rebounds, right? The length at the rim. So even